Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini-lecture on Mary Rowlandson and the sovereignty and goodness of God being a narrative of the captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. So, Mary Rowlandson lived from 1673 to 1711, and she's well most well-known for this account that she wrote about her experience being held hostage by Native Americans for several months. Uh, during her life and the the events were generated by King Philip's war uh, a it can be barely called a war because it in the end it was extremely brutal slaughter of Native Americans on uh, enacted by the colonists but the war was started in part because of you know some people went missing there was there's some confusion around exactly who was at fault, and the Pequot Indians ended up being blamed for um, for what had occurred. The Indians as a whole, even if it was individual actors that participated, and thus sparked King Philip's War, in which um, you know that the the amount of Native Americans versus actual colonists killed was is significantly uh, different. And it was it was a very bloody war that not many people are familiar with, in part because it didn't necessarily last that long, and there were less casualties on the colonists' behalf. And what Mary Rowlandson writes is a captivity narrative, and this is a a, a very small genre of of writing, of autobiographical writing that occurs in the 16, 17, and even 1800s uh, about people in, who get captured by narrative, get captured by natives, and ultimately survive, but write a tale telling what their captivity was like. And one of the things that Rowlandson, particularly in her writing emphasizes, and again we have to think about this is the 1600s, we're dealing with New England, which is a very uh, religious inspired colony, is she focuses on purity and godliness. And that this element, I mean we can even look at the title, right, the sovereignty and goodness of God, that's the actual title, being a, you know, and then the subtitle is being a narrative of the captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. So it's really about, from you know, at least how uh, Rowlandson frames this is, it is about the purity and the godly. It's about the purity and God and God choosing to save pure souls. But in reality, there's an awful lot of violence in this story, and there's a lot of hints of sex. Right? There's a decent amount of nudity going on, and there's an underlying suspicion about, well, Mary Rowlandson is with Native Americans for months. And there's a good question that never comes up in the text, and we may, may never know it was actually asked of her, but if the Native Americans are as brutal and violent and horrible as everybody is painting them, then the question that nobody really gets to ask, nobody asks, but is still there is, well, how did Rowlandson maintain her purity? How did she save herself from these supposed vicious beings? And I, I want to emphasize here, I, I in no way am personally um, identifying Native Americans as that, but this is the point of view of the colonists at the time in which they see them as savages, and you know the ways in which Mary depicts them at times is, is savage. Um, is brutal. And so the fact that this question of sex and the idea of rape is never actually brought to the forefront in Rowlandson's writing or those of the time does raise some interesting questions. Uh, I would argue that part of why she fix, she Rowlandson focuses this on godliness and salvation is in this idea of her being pure is that she does not want her fellow her fellow colonists to question that because you can you know she could never prove that they didn't take advantage of her she could never prove that they didn't and therefore she would be held suspect so 
you know, the, the, there's a lot of interesting things going on here and questions that can never really get asked or answered because of the culture of the time. Nobody, nobody will talk about sex openly in a, you know, in a religious, uh, in a religious colony in the 1600s. So when you jump into this narrative, I really want you to look at what, a ki what kind of contradictions do we find within the text, particularly around the descriptions of the natives versus their actions, right? The natives are regularly referred to as savage and brutal, and we do see them doing some brutal things. But are, is there anything that contradicts this view? Is there anything that we see that seems to challenge the idea of natives as savages? And what do we think of Mary and her story? Does her, do we believe her story entirely? Are there places where we think her story is questionable or problematic or doesn't make sense? And what stories or points of view can't Mary tell? So, you know, this is in part in reference to the whole sex thing is Mary really can't talk about sex because to bring it up in any way is going to really raise other questions that she can't answer or defend. So... I'm just going to go through a few passages here um, and really kind of pick, up, pick out a few themes that should be of interest to look at. Their first coming was about sunrising. Hearing the noise of some guns, we looked out. Several houses were burning and the smoke ascending to heaven. There were five persons taken in one house, the father and the mother and a sucking child. They knocked on the, they knocked on the head. The other, two, the other two they took and carried away alive. There were two others who, being out on the out of their garrison upon some occasion were set upon. One was knocked on the head and the other escaped. Another there was who was running along was shot and wounded and fell down. He begged of them his life, promising them money, as they told me. But they would not hearken to him, but knocked him, knocked him in the head and stripped him naked and split open his bowels. Another, seeing many of the Indians about his barn, ventured and went out, but was quickly shot down. There were three others being belonging to the same garrison who were killed. The Indians getting up on the roof of the barn had the advantage to shoot up, down upon them over their fortification. Thus the murderous wretches went on, burning and destroying before them. One of the things about the captivity narratives, and Rawlinson holds true to this, is you get action, right? You get some really great action scenes. This is a good opening, right? People reading this are going to be hooked. Yes, it's brutal, it's violent, but... People do love violence, right? If we look at you know our films and our movies, there is an abundance of violence. There's lots of good things that go on, but there's violence as well that pulls us in, right? We like a good action sequence, and that's exactly what Rawlinson is delivering here. Uh, this narrative as a whole has been so popular that it's been reproduced, uh, it's been republished. I mean, it, it continued to be republished as entertainment all the way up through the 18 and 1900s. Now away we must go with those barbarous creatures, with our bodies and with our bodies wounded and bleeding, and our hearts no less than our bodies. About a mile we went that night up upon a hill within a sight within sight of the town, where they intended to to lodge. To lodge, there was hard by a vacant house, deserted by English, by the English, before for fear of the Indians. I asked them whether I might not lodge in that in the house that that night to which they answered what will you love Englishmen still this was the dolefulest night that ever my eyes saw oh the roaring and singing and dancing and yelling of those black creatures in the night which made the place a lively resemblance of hell so notice here of course the only me the only mention of love is of her love of white men her love of Native Americans is never raised or never questioned and her her attempts to paint the Native Americans here as, you know, black creatures in the night, which made a place lively resemblance of hell. She's she's using biblical imagery to, of course, put this, you know, shape this as a test of her resolve. As a pure Christian woman, she is being tested by satanic forces. All right, so that those are two things to kind of keep aware of is, is the ways in which violence plays a role and the ways in which she shapes this as a Christian narrative, as a narrative of her against these satanic forces. Um, but look for other things. Really try to question her actual account of the story because I think you can find some really interesting layered material in there. All right, that's all for now. I will see you in the next lecture.